I know the year is 2023 and anything can happen in the UFC. That being said, I think it's time to address some of the Paulo Costa fans. Or should I say fanboys? Because I got a question for them. How long have you guys been checked out of reality? What's it like to be dreaming for this long? Because I hate to break it to you, but Hamza Chimaev is going to beat Paulo Costa like he fucking stole something from him. And what I mean by that is, I understand once again that we've had a lot of upsets, but Hamza Chimaev is going to absolutely maul him. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie King Kong, at least the remake. You know that scene where all the guys fall down that cliff and they end up being attacked by all these bugs? And some of the bugs were like these slugs that would just slowly engulf people's heads. Well, that's what I kind of see happening to Paulo Costa at UFC 294 when he fights Hamza Chemaev. He's going to get absolutely obliterated. And I want once again to address the Paulo Costa fans because I think they're in for a rude awakening. Because at the end of the day, say what you want, but ever since Paulo Costa fought for the title in 2020, his confidence has been completely and utterly broken. It's been destroyed, and he's resorted to a man that just really cares about showing up for a big payday. And God bless him, because he's completely checked out of actually chasing that belt. And to be honest, I just see a man that's just spinning his wheels. I see a guy that's just in there to be in there, just to get his money and go away, just to go home. Paulo Costa doesn't want a part of the fucking tough, gritty fights. Paulo Costa... He doesn't really bout that life. So the first thing I needed to get out of the way is just the mental game. Hamza Chemaev is a hungry, hungry dog that wants nothing more than to be a UFC champion at this point, who's probably training way harder than Paulo Costa, who's probably taking his career a lot more serious. But let's just get into the nitty gritty details. And let me give you guys some bulletproof answers as to why Paulo Costa is not beating Hamza Chemaev. Number one, there's this notion that Paulo Costa is a really great grappler. Paulo Costa is one of the best grapplers in the UFC, bro. He's so underrated, bro. Listen, if you were to say that Paulo Costa was an underrated grappler, maybe two or three years ago, I would have agreed with you because number one, he didn't really show a whole lot of it while he's been in the UFC. But if you don't know, well... Paulo Costa was a grappler before he got into the UFC. He was a grappler when he first started MMA, and he even used it quite a bit on tough. But ever since then, he's fallen in love with his hands. So even though I'm of the opinion of if you don't use it, you kind of lose it, you're still able to keep some remnants of it. And the reason I would have said Paulo Costa was underrated a few years ago is because he just didn't really show it and people wouldn't have thought that he had that in his arsenal. He has it in his arsenal, but it's just nowhere near the fucking level of Hamza Chemaev. Let's just be fucking honest. How often have we seen Paulo Costa look impressive on the ground? The only time he's ever looked impressive was against a dinosaur, Luke Rockhold, who was a champion in the early 2010s, okay, who, I don't know, may be the flying Dutchman of the UFC because he's been put into the shadow realm so many times, and Paulo Costa, okay, you took him down, and you just barely scraped by an old man, dinosaur Luke Rockhold, by the skin of your teeth. All right? And we're really going to give this man so much props for what? Mouth breathing on Luke Rockhold at altitude? Now, again, it's at altitude. It was in Salt Lake City. I understand it. But let's be honest. Luke Rockhold's not exactly the best wrestler that we've ever seen in MMA. The guy's a decent grappler once he gets on top of you, but he's not really known for having much off of his back. If you put him on his back, he ain't that good. I don't really think that Paulo Costa is going to be taking down Hamza Chemaev. All right, and I think that most of you guys can agree with that. The question is, can he keep it standing? Can he stuff the takedowns? Is he going to be too strong? Well, let's get into this bullshit narrative, the takedown defense, that I want to destroy as well. Every single time someone has tried to take down Paulo Costa, they have succeeded 100%. Yoel Romero attempted two takedowns in that fight and got one of them. In fact, the Costa fans, it's almost like they only watch his highlights because they see that one moment where Paulo Costa stuffed a big takedown from Yoel Romero and he shucked him off of him. But they don't remember that Yoel Romero took him down with a beautiful blast double leg in the center of the octagon in the second round of their fight and he held him down until the bell rang. Not only that... 
but mediocre Marvin Vittori. That's right. A guy that is talked about as being someone that is so unbelievably mediocre. He's just not good anywhere, but he's not terrible anywhere either. He not only beat Paulo Costa and outstruck him despite giving up 20 pounds because Paulo Costa couldn't make weight that fight, but he got taken down by Marvin Vittori and Marvin Vittori took his back. That's right, mediocre Marvin Vittori, who might not even be a top 10 middleweight right now, took this man down and took his back. And Marvin Vittori's also taken Israel Adesanya's back, but the thing is, he was just too dense to be able to keep his body lock in because he was too focused on squeezing Adesanya's head until it popped out because he's a hothead, Marvin Vittori. Hamza Chemaev is going to get a hold of fucking Paulo Costa. He's going to take him down. He's a better wrestler than Marvin Vittori. He's a better grappler than Luke Rockhold. And I just think that at a certain point, there's going to be too much of a difference when it comes to the pure grappling skill. And there's a different level of finesse that Hamza Chemaev has. And even if Paulo Costa is strong and he's got some crazy strength, Hamza Chemaev is still going to be able to figure out where he is most vulnerable with his weight placement and he'll take advantage of that and get a hold of this motherfucker and take him down, okay? And so what happens when Hamza Chemaev takes him down? Is he just going to sit in half guard and maybe try to get over there to, to, to side control like Yoel Romero did back in the day? And Yoel Romero wasn't really known for being this guy that had tremendous control. No. Hamza Chemaev is going to wrap your legs up. Hamza Chemaev is going to try to take your back and sink in the hooks. Hamza Chemaev is going to nullify you as soon as possible with some next level grappling prowess. And Paulo Costa, when has this man shown to be able to have like these incredible, beautiful scrambles? He's got these little T-Rex arms and all he has is an underhook. I'm telling you right now, this man is fucked. Hamza may as well just be the Mike Tyson of grappling, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the level of speed at which he's able to get people out of there and finish them in the first round without taking any adversity, any punches, any punishment whatsoever is insane. Yes, I understand he's beating guys that are smaller. I understand that he's beating someone like Kevin Holland, like Li Jing Liang, but it's the way that he's beating them. He is absolutely mauling them. This guy is five steps ahead of all of his opponents. And strength, well, to be honest, every time it's hit the mat with Hamza Chemaev, I really don't think there's been that much of those submissions, that much of those finishes that are just going to mostly be attributed to strength. It's skill, my man. And Paulo Costa, he may as well just be a big rock-headed oaf. All right? And you might say, well, hold up, hold up. He took down Gilbert Burns, who's a small little guy, and he couldn't do anything to Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is one of the most defensively sound grapplers in the history of MMA. I know that Gilbert Burns is not the best grappler overall. I know he's not the most dangerous man when it comes to submitting people. But when we're talking about someone's ability to nullify danger on the ground, I think that Gilbert Burns is going to be better than basically anyone else. This is a guy that got his back taken by Damian Maya and was able to get out of it like it was nothing. This is a guy that got taken down by Hamza Chemaev with ease in the first 30 seconds, but he was able to settle in his guard and then nullify whatever Hamza Chemaev had to throw at him with skill. It wasn't a strength thing. It wasn't a size thing. It was a awareness thing on the ground. I am telling you this right now. If you are going to compare Gilbert Burns to the big oaf, the fucking brick-headed oaf, Paulo Costa, you have another thing coming. And now you may say, well, what if it doesn't hit the mat? What if he does stuff the takedowns? All right. Well, let's talk about the striking because I'm going to absolutely shut that down too for you guys. Listen, Hamza Chemaev, I understand he went to war with Gilbert Burns. I get it. All right, that was when, over a year ago, Hamza Chemaev has probably been improving drastically, especially because his confidence, unlike Paulo Costa, hasn't been completely broken and stripped away. If anything, he's probably working harder than he's ever worked. That was a bit of a wake-up call. How old was he when he fought Gilbert Burns? What, 27 years old? He's 28? I think that Hamza Chemaev is going to be better than that. Also, Let's be honest, once again, Gilbert Burns is someone that's able to nullify what he's doing on the ground because he's got insanely good defensive skills on the ground, on his back. And other than that, Paulo Costa, guys, 
Get out of the past. These Costa fans are fucking acting like this is 2018. They're acting like it's 2019. That this guy's coming off of the Yoel Romero fight. He don't have power in his hands. Paulo Costa's a volume puncher. Paulo Costa's got these little T-Rex arms. Hamza Chemaev is going to not only have the speed advantage because he's moving up a weight class, but he's also got the power advantage. Hamza's actually laid motherfuckers out throughout his career. Paulo Costa... Even Max Holloway has flatlined more people than him. And Max Holloway is not really someone that's known for his power. Paulo Costa, I get it. He looks like a big, strong guy. And he is a big, strong guy. But he doesn't hit fucking hard, bro. He just simply doesn't. All right, he's got some thud at the end of those shots. But we're looking at all the TKOs this guy's ever gotten. Over who, by the way? Who the fuck is this guy even knocked out? Uriah Hall, Johnny Hendricks. Yeah, that's right. Post-USADA Johnny Hendricks from the dinosaur era. And Uriah Hall, the biggest head case in the UFC, who at that time just knew he wasn't going to be champ or get even close. Other than that, Paulo Costa hasn't had a single good finish in the UFC. And all I'm saying is this, man. All of those finishing sequences that we see of him are like 20 punch combinations, rip into the body, just volume striking, pit patting away until his opponent's just, you know, a little bit overwhelmed. But we're talking about old men here. Paulo Costa, whenever he's fought people in their prime, Adesanya, Marvin Vittori, or even someone that's just upper echelon that's out of their prime, like Luke Rockhold, he's either gotten absolutely humiliated or he's looked way worse than mid, okay? We saw what happened against Adesanya. Paulo Costa had the least success out of anyone in human history against Adesanya. I guarantee you Kaikara France is able to put more work on Adesanya than big Paulo Costa, who didn't do fuck all in that fight and basically gave Adesanya the best win he's ever had. Every single other person that Israel Adesanya's fought has tested him much, much more. And now we're going to talk about the Marvin Vittori fight. When you have a guy named mediocre Marvin Vittori outstriking you, a guy that just isn't really good anywhere, but just super average everywhere, that's the guy that's outstriking you and you have a 15 to 20 pound weight advantage because you didn't want to cut weight and you're also talked about as being a big power puncher. All I have to say is this, you're overrated. You're overrated as hell, bro. Let's just be honest about it, guys. He lost to Marvin Vittori. Look at what Jared Cannonier did to Marvin Vittori. Look at what Robert Whittaker did to Marvin Vittori. Hell, even Roman Delidze was able to make it closer than Paulo Costa. And I know it was a good fight, but at the end of the day, bro, that wasn't even the best version of Vittori that there's been, dude. And then having a razor close fight with an old Luke Rockhold, Dinosaur Man Rockhold, the Flying Dutchman of the UFC, not even being able to go in there and knock him out. You guys think Jared Cannonier isn't putting away Luke Rockhold? You think Hamza Chemaev isn't putting away Luke Rockhold? Paulo Costa had such an underwhelming, mediocre performance that didn't live up to expectations that no one even remembers that he won that fight. It's almost as if Luke Rockhold walked away with a dub and sailed off into the sunset. Paulo Costa is mediocre. Hamza Chemaev has absolutely dismantled every single person that he's ever faced with the utmost ease other than Gilbert Burns, a guy that is literally, in my opinion, the most offensively sound grappler maybe in the history of the sport and has an ADCC background. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be the best submission artist or the most dangerous man on the ground, but it means that he's incredibly high level when it comes to being aware on the ground. Paulo Costa is a big block-headed oaf. Okay, that has overrated power, that has decent grappling, and the only thing he has on Hamza Chemaev is the fact that he's fought at middleweight a little bit more, and he's probably just a tad bit bigger and leaner when he actually cuts down to that weight class. People are acting as if Hamza Chemaev isn't also one of the biggest 170 pounders to ever walk the fucking face of the earth that has fought at middleweight multiple times. And the same people that'll tell you that Paulo Costa's too big for Hamza Chemaev are the guys that'll tell you that Bradley Martin could not beat Mighty Mouse because the skill gap is just too much. When are you guys going to wake up? The five extra pounds that Paulo Costa is going to have on Hamza Chemaev aren't going to do shit. Hamza Chemaev is either going to knock this man clean out in the first round or he's going to take him down and maul him until he taps. He's going to beat him up like he stole something. And I cannot wait 
not because I want to see the demise of Paulo Costa, not because I want to say I was right, but so that these Paulo Costa fanboys, and you could be a fan of him, that's awesome, dude, I'm a fan of Paulo Costa, but that the fanboys can snap out of their dream and actually get a dose of reality. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is this. I actually had a dream about this fight a few weeks ago. Actually, I think it was like a week ago. And what it was, was that Hamza Chemaev got a hold of Paulo Costa and Costa reversed position and choked him out. So I'm just going to say that for what that's worth. And I'm being actually 100% serious. I actually had a dream. I think I was like coaching Hamza Chemaev. And basically, he takes him down and Paulo reverses the position and literally chokes him out, like flattens him out on the ground and gets his neck and chokes him out. And uh, I was like, fuck, dude, I was really pissed. Whatever that's worth, I just wanted to chuck that out there. Um, if Hamza Chemaev doesn't run through Paulo Costa, I'm going to be disappointed. If he has a war with Paulo Costa, which is possible, maybe Paulo Costa is just a stubborn, stubborn bastard and he's going in there just to survive first and foremost and not necessarily to win. Well, then I'm just going to think of Hamza Chemaev isn't as good as I, as I originally thought. And not only will I be wrong, but I'll be very disappointed in Hamza Chemaev because what I view him as right now is the grappling version of Mike Tyson, who's basically going to go on to be a multiple-time world champion. And I think that this guy could finish basically most of the people in the middleweight rankings in the first or second round. If you're picking Paulo Costa and I get this one wrong, then uh, you guys are going to have a lot of fun laughing in my face, and deservedly so. So uh, I'm looking forward to UFC 294. May the best man win. What's up guys, it's Lucas Tracy MMA, and I'm wondering if you're trying to look like Yoel Romero. Well, if you don't have his genetics, that's impossible, but I could at least help you get halfway there with my ultimate lifting program, and if you're a beginner, my novice lifting program. These are programs that I've used my nine years of experience in the gym to make so that you can put on as much muscle as possible in as little amount of time as possible. And it'll also give you a variety of workouts so that you never get tired of the gym. So if you're interested, click the link in my description. And for a discount, use code MMA for 30% off.